If you live in the Netherlands, you're going to know this guy. If you don't, you will know. I mean, if you don't know him, you will know him by the end of this, hopefully. Richard from Fatal Flowers. Hi, Richard. Hi. Thanks for dropping in. A uh, surprise, I might add. Mm. They just sort of just dropped in out of the blue and said, Hi, I'm here. So now I'm going to have to try and um, do this interview, aren't I? OK, well, let's have a try. Huh? So, so tell me about your last record, Prince. No, that's the wrong person. Is it? No, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> close, <laughs> Hello, <where> close. <laughs> Richard, now Fatal Flowers. Yeah, they're from from Holland. How long have you been? How long have you been doing the Fatal Flowers? About three years, three and a half. So. What sort of what sort of status have you have you reached in in the Netherlands? Um, you live off of your music. Sort of, yeah. Most of the time, anyway. When we're when we're gigging, uh, that is, um, which we do most most of the most of the year, really. So we sort of, what status? I mean, there's not many bands around in Holland, so. No, people take that for granted, like watching MTV and seeing all these people on videos thinking they all, you know, elsewhere in the world you can live off of rock and roll and get yeah. quite rich. But in Holland and Belgium, places like that, it's 
difficult, isn't it? It's uh, it's bloody hard. Yeah, <laughs> you can't actually. It's it's very hard to live off of your music in those countries because the record sales are so low that you really can't live off your royalties. You know, you have to live off your gigs. Mm. So what you really have to do is like uh, play gigs like throughout the whole year. But then again, there's only a limited um, amount of places to play. So there you go. You know, it's, uh, How are the Dutch people towards Dutch music? I mean. Because Holland is a place where most yeah. international artists start off yeah. selling records. Yeah. How are they to their own people? Very critical, I'd say. Are they? Yeah. They, they like it in the beginning, but this, um, I think the moment you get a little, a little bigger, they, they're probably the most sort of... Um, it's, it's a very, a very hard audience because they're very hard to... Because, you know, you get all those stars in Holland, you know, all over the world. Uh, everybody comes comes to play in Holland, you know. Mm. So people are used to uh, pretty high standards, I would say. I, it's hard to live up to now. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying, yeah. of course. How many how how much uh, how many albums have you actually made, or how many singles have you put out? Well, we started out with a sort of 12-inch mini album, which was done here in London by Greg Lee, and, and then next year next year we had an album out, which done which was done by Fig Mail, so so English. Huh? Mm. It's called Younger Days, and now we've just been to Woodstock in America. And we recorded a new album. Actually but, in Woodstock? Uh, actually in Woodstock, yes. Now, why? I mean, in these modern 80s, would you return to the whole hippie hunting ground? To, no, to even record? old hippie hunting grounds got, like, uh, modern studios, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to do with the old hippie ideals? No, 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 not really. It's uh, We did this album with Mick Ronson, and that's where he lives, actually, so... He knew the place, he knew the studio and everything, so it was quite handy for us to go over there instead of for him to come to Europe. It's good to know that he's still around, actually. Mick Ronson, mm. of course, in case you're too young to remember, David Bowie's ex-guitarist and a lot of uh, good solo albums. How is he? What's he like, Mick Ronson? Oh, he's great. He's, he's great uh, to work with as well. He's sort of like, uh, like a coach almost, you know what I mean? He sort of tries to, um, to bring out the best in the band. He's not like a producer who would say, oh, all right, go and stand over there. Play, play your stuff and out again. Mm. He's really somebody who start, tries to stimulate you to to come up with uh, with your own ideas as well. So mm. it's really uh, it's really good fun to work with him. Right. Good. Well, we'll talk more about that album. We're also going to show you a video from Fatal Flowers made by MTV recently, very recently, this morning actually. Well, not this morning, yesterday morning. Sorry, it's Sunday morning, isn't it? I'm forgetting where I am. Anyway, you'll see that a little bit later on. But first, Climby Fisher, this is me. And stay tuned, because Richard from the Fatal Flowers is going to be around the rest of this hour. Don't go away. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining us. With us in the studio at the moment, Richard, the lead singer and main guitarist from Fatal Flowers. Now, Richard, the obvious question is, uh, yeah. who's Johnny D then? Oh, he's just somebody I made up, really. Somebody you made up? Yeah, it's just a character. It's like uh, maybe an old, old sort of rock and roll star, about around his 40s, I would say. Was sort of being pushed into a comeback, but it's uh, not really working out. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, uh, so some stories going around like that all the time. Yeah, yeah, sure. Now, that, in that video, we saw you working with Mick Ronson. Uh -huh. Is the new album, who, who finances these things for you? Well, a record company does, not it? <laughs> if you say that you can't, you can't live off your royalties, yeah. and so there's not a lot of money pouring back in into Fatal Flowers, no. are, are you going to be in massive debt to a record company then? No, 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 you never are. I mean, you're never in debt. I mean, they spend the money, and if it's, you know, if it's like a big hit, they uh, they make some money, and if, if it's not, they just lose it, but the band never loses money on records, I would say. No, good. Not that I know of. I mean, certainly we haven't got a deal like that. No, good, <laughs> no. good. How is it for you um, living in Holland? Would you, have you, have you found that your music is, goes across frontiers difficult, with difficulty, you know, into other countries? To other countries? Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit hard because um, people are sort of more interested in f maybe American and English bands, and then maybe Dutch or Belgian or German bands. But it's pretty hard for a um, sort of continental band to get get across borders. Uh, it's because you first you, you, you first thing you have to do is like uh, you have to concentrate on your home market, you know, which then. In case of like uh, Danish bands and Belgian bands and Dutch bands, it's, it's very small. It's very limited. So n n there you go. So it's um, because it's so because it's so limited. The, the the money pouring into a band is also very limited. And you know things with like making videos. It's like 
it really costs a lot of money, right? Sure. And I would say most Belgians or Danish or, or Dutch companies just don't have the money to to do that, to really sort of promote the bands, mm. which is, of course, the only th thing you can, you, you can do with the bands, really, to promote them outside your own country, is to sort of do it with, with clips and stuff. It's strange, though, though, don't you think, isn't it frustrating to be in a band and to see a lot of money, especially in Great Britain, there's a lot of money spent on bands that are not really worth it, you yes. know, who make rubbish <laughs> records. I mean, the most yes, recent know, example, yeah. mm. Transvision Vamp, mm. have an enormous amount of money spent on them. They probably made one good record, and there's still loads of money being spent on them. Yeah. Yet some of the songs that you've made are, are very strong songs, and they don't get the money spent on them. Yeah. Does, does that really does make you angry? <coughs> well, it's just a fact that, um, that there is more and more money involved in pop music because it, the, the promotional side of it, of it all is so much more important than, than it ever was. And so the whole music thing is becoming more and more a product which you have to sell and you just sell things through like hats and, and, and videos and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, it's, um, it's just a fact you have to, uh, have to live with and like in England there is a lot more money involved which is pretty obvious. And the only thing is, which is frustrating is that uh, obviously in some cases it's, it's very possible to to uh, get a hit single or promote a really shitty band because there's just a lot of money involved, you know, and it's um, it's not a very nice thing. But then again, one like I said, things. it's one of those things you have to live with, right? We all have our cross yeah. to bear. Yeah. <laughs> but you didn't need any money to make this video, which I'm glad to say MGV no, no. has done for you. Going to see it now. It's the it's the new single. Yeah, that's the single. It's a rock and roll star. That's right. Something that you'd like to be yourself, is it? <laughs> well, not the way it's presented in, uh, in this song. <laughs> <laughs> sure not. Let's see it. Fatal Flowers on your MTV with a video specially made by the team here at MTV. Good old team they are, you know. And we'll be back later. I have to say that, of course. We'll be back later with more Richard from the Fatal Flowers and myself and yourself if you join us.
Richard this hour, Richard from the Fatal Flowers, in case you've just tuned in. Richard, you said earlier on, Fatal Flowers are from the Netherlands. Yeah. In Holland, if you go to any of the, the big towns in Holland, you see lots of young people yeah. dressed well, and they're out drinking and uh, doing other things having and, fun, so, and yeah. having fun. <laughs> and they're all very modern, laid-back people, liberated people. Why aren't there more bands then? Oh, but there are. But there then you are, say yeah. there are not a lot. There are not a lot of bands who really are doing something. But then again, there are a lot of bands, there's a lot of people make, making music, but, um, but um, there's just not many bands uh, getting out of that uh, first phase, you know. It's, um, most of the bands are still sort of in a hobby um, phase, and which is pretty hard to, uh, to get out, because mo I think most of the people are sort of... Um, they don't really believe they could ever live off their music, mm. you know, so they got jobs or they are students and yeah. stuff like that and it takes uh, I think it takes a little step to say like all right this is it I'm gonna make I'm gonna make music and is there enough um, I don't know if you understand the word mm. in infrastructure yeah is there enough business in Holland would you like to see something change to make it easier for bands to sort of give up their day jobs and well one thing that could change is um, Dutch bands could be promoted a lot more on, on the Dutch radio, it's uh, the situation now is like there are there are bands um, like us as well, and uh, uh, bands like Claw Boys Claw, who mm. sort of like sell out every major place in Holland, and you won't hear them on the radio, you know, which is very which, which is a very strange situation. Yeah, I would say, terrible, because obviously there is an audience for it, but you just won't you won't ever hear so it. So why is that then? Why have they decided not to put it on the radio? Because it's too loud, it's too much rock and roll for them to bear, I guess. <laughs> wow. Isn't that how rock and roll should be? Well, not in Holland, it isn't. It's no, <laughs> not anywhere no. really anymore, no. is it? The, the old rebel has gone out of the rock and roll. Yeah. Um, now, later on tonight, you're going to leave us now, later on tonight yeah. you'll be appearing in a concert mm. with a few other Dutch bands. Yeah. Where's that, in the sports, sports complex in Eigenhauen? That's or? very good. <laughs> I thought I might remember that one. <laughs> Somewhere tonight. Now, what is this? Just a, a gig in, in aid of anything? Why are there are so many bands on one bill? Oh, it's just a sort of festival, really. You know, it's um, this happens a lot in Holland and Belgium as well uh, during the summer. Mm. There are all kinds of festivals, which is uh, most of them great fun to play because there's a lot of people there and there's some other bands there. And, you know, yeah, let's see who the other bands are. You should probably say the name properly so that people watching can actually know where this thing is going on. Yeah. Is I've got the Bullets, Fatal Flowers, yeah, yourselves, yeah. Lois Lane, Truck and a Kex. Uh -huh. The ministers, and it's all at the sport complex in Einikhausen. Einikhausen. Einikhausen, which it obviously is in the Limburg, isn't it? Yes, obviously. Yeah. Of course, yes. Yeah. So go along and support your local Dutch band tonight. You know, these are the international people. have got enough money. Thank you very much for coming in, Richard. Thank you. And have a great concert tonight. Thank you very much. And you'll see them a lot more on MTV because we've made a little video and we're very proud of it. Hmm. I didn't have anything to do with it, but people who did, very proud of it indeed. <laughs> so, up for the Oscars very soon, yes. Well, I'm getting into this now. I have to go home with you too. Thank you for coming in. Okay. Glad. And good luck with the new album. Thank you very much. It, can you get it everywhere over Europe, the, the LP? Um, in a short while, yeah. In a short while? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's Johnny D is back is the That's title right. of it. That's Look out for it in your local shop. You want to say goodbye to your mum over there? Okay. Yeah, I like to. Goodbye, mum.
Richard, één wens is in vervulling ingebracht. Uh, in ieder geval gebracht. Dat is met je bent op een piratenschip. En dan spelen ook. Dat is iets. Over wensen gesproken. Hoe zie je de Veta Flowers in een wensdroom? Uiteindelijk. Uh, spelend op toernooi. Ergens buiten Nederland. Buiten Nederland? Waarom buiten Nederland? Omdat we hier al vaak gespeeld hebben. Dus... Maar heb je alles al gehaald hier, denk je? Of daar eigenlijk? Mm, mm, al dat soort dingen wat voor ons uh, van belang is, wel denk ik. Bijna. Ja. Je kan natuurlijk wel een andere subjects verder, maar ik weet niet hoe dat dan zo zeer ambiëren. Dus... Jullie zijn dus, uh, om het zo maar eens even te zeggen, aan het lonken geweest naar Amerika. Wat is ja. daar zo aantrekkelijk aan? Als je daar ooit wil, uh, wil gaan spelen, dan is het natuurlijk al heel handig als je er bijvoorbeeld je plaat hebt opgenomen en heb je wat mensen leren kennen, et cetera. Dus dat is allemaal een uh, stap in de goede richting. En verder in het opnemen in Amerika, wat daar zo aantrekkelijk aan is, is dat daar uh, meer mensen met meer ervaring zitten. Ja. Hè? Ik bedoel, als je, dus, dus ik denk als je de situatie in Nederland, denk ik, stond op, op muziek, denk ik zo. 66, 67 nog heel erg in een kinderschoen, terwijl het daar al veel verder uh, ontwikkeld was. Dus heb je daar ook mensen met meer ervaring, daar is gewoon weinig aan te doen. Een heel andere vraag, wat doe jij naast popmuziek het liefst? Het liefst? <lacht> slapen. Even, ja, echt wat. Wel slapen denk ik, ja. Als <lacht> ik daar aan toe kom. Ja, Stel... verder, verder doe ik er eigenlijk niet echt veel... Uh... Naast, nee. Hoeveel uur ben je ermee bezig per week met de bunt uiteraard? Nou ja, dat, dat, dat verschilt uh, heel erg. Ik kijk sowieso minimaal drie dagen per week aan optreden. Dus daar ben je sowieso natuurlijk de hele dag aan kwijt. Plus, de volgende, plus je komt meestal nu zes thuis of zo. Dus de dag erop eigenlijk ook wel. Dus het is al drie, vier dagen. En de rest van de drie dagen repeteer je toch minstens één, twee dagen. Dus ja, ik heb eigenlijk een vrij normale week zoals ieder ander eigenlijk ook heeft. Van één dag vrij, alleen is dat dan... Bij ons meestal op een maandag of zo. Stel, jij mag inrichten hoe de Ark van Noach eruit gaat zien. Dus niet de Ark van Noach, maar de Ark van Richard Jansen. Oh, wie, wie zou je dan meenemen? Of wie zou je in ieder geval op zijn boot willen hebben? Uh, mijn vriendin. <lacht> en uh, een goede dijkenbouwer, zo misschien. <lacht> Zoiets. Ja, god. Dan, uh, voor elk iemand die ik, uh, die ik nu zeg die ik op ze wil hebben, vergeet ik ook weer iemand. Dus. Wat dat betreft uh, kan je me dat soort, dat soort vragen alleen maar mensen heel hard tegen een schenen schop ik denk. Top. Als <laughs> ik nou zeg van ja, nou wil ik je niet op hebben, wat dan? Een bezuipje. Nou, is toch niet leuk? Of... <laughs> Jij mag hem inrichten. <laughs> ja, dat heb je dan. Got to scrape your shoes. 
In de studio, ik heb het je al gezegd, nu dan de Amsterdamse band The Fate of Flowers. Hartstikke leuk dat jullie er zijn. Richard, ik ben een aantal dingen benieuwd. Ben je naar Michael Jackson geweest? Nee. Waarom niet? Geen kaartje, denk ik. Nee, zou je wel willen? Uh, jawel, ja. dat had ik wel willen zien. Ja. Ja. Uh, jullie gaan heel hard op dit moment. Er is heel veel geld in jullie gestopt, dat klinkt heel raar. Ja. Maar jullie, jullie hebben een nieuw LP gemaakt. Die gaat ook uitgebracht worden in Amerika. Jullie gaan voor interviews gaan jullie weg naar het buitenland. Hoe voelt dat? Uh, dat is precies wat, uh, waar je het eigenlijk voor doet. Het reizen. En, uh, en de wereld zien, dat soort dingen. En dan dat uh, naar aanleiding van je muziek, dat is denk ik het leukste wat er is. Ja. Heb je ook een soort, een soort moment van boodschap uit te dragen? Een boodschap uit te dragen? Ja, ik bedoel voor het reizen, dat, is, dat vind ik ook wel leuk. Een boodschap uit te dragen? Nee, hebben we niet. Nee. nee? nee. Een beetje rock rol maken. Precies, ja. ja. Dat is het. Dan zijn je ook met een aantal bekende mensen in, uh, in zee gegaan. Uh, Mick Ronson en zo. Hoe, dat is een, moet een raar gevoel zijn als je opeens zoveel geld achter je aan krijgt. Zoveel bekende mensen van de platenmaatschappij. Zet het geen druk op de ketel? Nou, het is in eerste instantie altijd andersom. Dat wij achter hun aan zitten. <laughs> dus ja? Wij zitten meer achter die beroemde mensen aan dan zij achter ons natuurlijk. En het is wel een heel uh, prettig gevoel als dat uiteindelijk dan uh, resulteert in zo'n samenwerking met uh, Mick Ronson. Ja. Ja. Hoe is dat in zijn werk gegaan? Opeens zat je naast hem? Uh, nee, we hebben twee jaar geleden een keer een hele kleine kroegjes opgetreden in Londen. En toen hebben we hem gewoon opgebeld. En toen kwam hij gewoon kijken. En naar aanleiding daarvan uh, is eigenlijk het eerste contact gelegd. En toen uh, en dan krijg je het bekende werk van demo sturen en over en weer bellen. En uiteindelijk is het uh, gelukt. Dus. Ja. Wil je beroemd worden, jullie? Willen wij beroemd worden? Ja? Maar we willen zoveel mogelijk uh, reizen. Reizen en spelen <laughs> en platen maken. Ja? Dus, <laughs> ja. dus beroemd worden? Dat uh, heeft zit dus wel. Uh, het zit wel aan elkaar vast, geloof ik. De nieuwe single, die gaan jullie zo meteen voor ons doen. Uh, na Jonger Days, weer net zo'n grote hit? Dat ligt, uh, ligt aan jou gevoel. Ja. Oké, okay, nou hartstikke veel succes in de toekomst. In Amerika, waar je ook naartoe gaat. En uh, bedankt voor het interview. En uh, veel plezier. The Fatal Flowers!
Nederlandse band die u nu hoort, ging zijn jongste LP opnemen in Woodstock. Hij was in de voorbije zomermaanden op heel wat festivaletjes in België en elders te zien. Als dat maar geen internationale carrière wordt. Fatal Flowers en Moving Target.
There you go.